Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we are going to talk about the non-inverting op-amp configuration and we will see how to use this op-amp as a voltage follower. Now in the last video, we had seen the inverting op-amp configuration and in that configuration, we had seen that using the negative feedback, we can control the gain of this op-amp. And in that configuration, we have applied the input to this inverting terminal of the op-amp and we have grounded the non-inverting terminal. Now let us see what happens when we apply this input to this non-inverting terminal. So let's say we have applied the input to this non-inverting terminal and we have grounded this inverting terminal. So this kind of configuration is known as a non-inverting op-amp configuration because here the output and input are in a phase. So now for this configuration, let us find the relation between this output and the input voltage. So now before we find the relationship between the output and input voltage, let me redraw the same circuit so that you can have a better idea about the circuit. So here I have redrawn the same circuit in a different way. So here we have applied the input to this non-inverting input terminal and we have a feedback resistance RF between the output and the inverting input terminal. And if you see here, the one end of this resistance R1 is connected to the resistance RF and another end of this resistor R1 is connected to the ground. So if you see here, the fraction of output voltage is going as a feedback to this inverting input terminal. So let us say here at this point, the voltage is Vx and this Vx voltage is going as a feedback to this inverting input terminal. Now using the voltage divider rule, we can say that this voltage Vx that is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus RF into V out. So this voltage will be going as a feedback to this inverting input terminal. So at this point also, the voltage will be equal to Vx. Now in the last video, we had seen that whenever we are using this op-amp in a negative feedback configuration, then there will be a virtual short between the both the input terminals of this op-amp. It means that whatever voltage that appears at one end of this input terminal, the same voltage will appear at the another end of the input terminal. It means that V plus that is equal to V minus and that is because of this virtual short between this non-inverting and the inverting input terminal. So here in this configuration, we are applying the input voltage to this non-inverting terminal. That means V plus that is equal to V in. So because of this virtual short at this inverting input terminal also, the voltage should be equal to V in. That means V minus should be equal to V in and we know that V minus that is equal to Vx. So we can write this input voltage V in that is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus RF into V out. Or we can say that V out divided by V in that is equal to R1 plus RF divided by R1 that is equal to 1 plus RF divided by R1. So this will be the closed loop gain of this non-inverting op-amp configuration. So in non-inverting op-amp configuration, the relation between the output and input is equal to 1 plus RF divided by R1. So in this non-inverting op-amp configuration also, just by controlling the value of this RF and R1, we can control the gain of this op-amp. But in this non-inverting op-amp configuration, the output and input will have a same phase. So let's say if I apply 1 volt of DC signal at this non-inverting input terminal and if I take value of R1 as 1 kilo ohm, then my gain of this op-amp will be equal to 1 plus 2 divided by 1 that is equal to 3. So at the output, I will get 3 volt of DC signal or instead of DC voltage, let's say if I apply a 1 volt of sinusoidal signal and if I have a value of RF as 2 kilo ohm and R1 as 1 kilo ohm, then at the output, I will get a 3 volt of amplified AC signal which is having a same phase with respect to input signal. So in this non-inverting open configuration, just by controlling the value of this feedback resistance RF and R1, we can control the gain of this open and in this configuration, the output and input are in a phase. So this is all about the non-inverting open configuration. So now here the question is, what is the advantage of this non-inverting open configuration over this inverting open configuration? Because if you see both the configurations, in both the configurations, we can control the gain using this feedback resistance RF and R1. So let us find out some of the advantages of non-inverting op-amp configuration over this inverting op-amp configuration. 
Now, one of the obvious advantage of this non-inverting OPM configuration is that the output and input both are in a phase. While in case of this inverting OPM configuration, there is a 180 degree phase shift between the output and the input voltage. Apart from this, if you see this non-inverting OPM configuration, then in this configuration, the input impedance of the circuit is very high. And if we consider the ideal OPM, then in that case, the input impedance of the circuit is infinite. While in case of this inverting OPM configuration, the input impedance depends upon the value of R1. So if we consider the ideal OPM, then in that case, the input impedance of this inverting OPM will be equal to R1. So now let us derive the expression for this input impedance in case of this inverting as well as the non-inverting OPM configuration. So now if you see the inverting OPM configuration, then in this configuration, the input impedance is the impedance that is seen through this voltage source V in. Or in another words, we can say that the input impedance of this configuration is equal to the input voltage divided by the current that is going into the circuit. So let us say the current I in is going into this circuit. So now here the ratio of input voltage divided by this input current will give us the input impedance of this configuration. Now we know that in this inverting open configuration, this node will act as a virtual ground because here this non-inverting terminal is already grounded. So we can say that this I in that is equal to V in divided by R1 or we can say that R1 that is equal to V in divided by I in. Now we know that V in divided by I in is equal to input impedance. So we can say that the input impedance of this inverting OPM configuration is equal to R1. So the input impedance of this configuration depends upon the value of R1. So let's say if value of R1 is very low, then in that case the input impedance of the circuit will be low. So similarly, let us find the input impedance of this non-inverting OPM configuration. So in this non-inverting OPM configuration also, the input impedance is the impedance that is seen through this voltage source V in. So let us once again assume that current that is being supplied by this voltage source is I in and the ratio of this V in divided by I in will give us the input impedance of this non-inverting OPM configuration. So now if we consider this OPM as ideal OPM, then there will not be any current that is going into this inverting and the non-inverting terminals or we can say that this input current I in that is equal to approximately zero and hence we can say that the input impedance is equal to infinite. So now in any circuit whenever we have a very high input impedance then that will ensure that the source that is connected to that circuit will not be get loaded. So let us understand this point. So let us say we have one voltage source Vs and it is having a source resistance Rs and it is connected to one circuit and this circuit has an input impedance Z in. So now whenever the value of this input impedance is comparable to the value of this RS then in that case the voltage that appears across the two terminal of the circuit will be equal to Z in divided by Z in plus RS into Vs and as Z in is equal to RS then the value of voltage V will be equal to Vs by 2. So only half of the voltage will appear across this circuit. So in any circuit the value of input impedance should be very high. So that whatever voltage that is being applied to that circuit will entirely appear across that circuit. So in this case of non-inverting OPM configuration, as the input impedance is approximately equal to infinite or in practical case it is very high. So whatever voltage that is applied to that circuit will entirely appear across that circuit. So that is the advantage of this non-inverting OPM configuration. Now in this non-inverting OPM configuration, let us say we have RF that is equal to zero and R1 that is equal to infinity. Then the circuit will look like this. So this circuit is known as the OPM as a voltage follower circuit or OPM as a buffer. So here we have shorted this output terminal with this inverting OPM terminal. So at this point voltage will be equal to V out and because of the feedback V minus that is equal to V plus or we can say that because of the feedback we have a virtual short between this inverting and the non-inverting OPM terminals. So we can say that V minus will be equal to V in or we can say that V in will be equal to V out. So it means that whatever voltage that is 
applied to this non inverting op amp terminal the same voltage will appear at the output of this op amp so we can say that the output voltage follows the input voltage and that is why this circuit is known as the voltage follower circuit so the characteristic of this circuit is that the input impedance of this circuit is very high or ideally it is infinite and the output voltage will be equal to input voltage so because of these two characteristics this circuit is also known as the buffer circuit because it will pass whatever input that is coming to it as it is and it will provide the very high input impedance so using this buffer circuit we can isolate the two different circuits and at the same time we can ensure that whatever voltage that is appearing at the output of the one circuit will appear at the input of the another circuit and that is particularly useful when we have a low input impedance in one circuit so i hope in this video you understood the non inverting op amp configuration and the advantages of this non inverting op amp configuration over the inverting op amp configuration and how to design the voltage follower or the buffer circuit using this op amp so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos